is Dr. Noah Liu here with our Secure Dental Podcast. Now today I'm doing something really different. I'm not in front of a screen. I'm here live here with Dr. Wag. And this gentleman has flew in from Utah for our Dr. Shore here at Signature Art Smiles. So let's start. Yeah. Tell me a little bit background about yourself. So from Salt Lake, so we got my partner and I, my partner and I, Randy Roberts, got into implants a uh, long time ago. And we started kind of seeing our patient population change as far as full mouth rehab goes. And I don't know if you've experienced How, the how did you thing. and Randy meet? So um, his nephew worked for him and I knew his nephew. So I got out of dental oh, school. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And got con in contact with them. And so they brought me on and, and credit to Randy, he let me do anything I wanted to do. And so we, we were doing some really inexpensive implants and so we just got just a crazy amount of experience. Tons of people. You gotta start in. somewhere, right? Yeah, you could start there. And uh, it, was, it was the experience that kind of drove us through the fields, getting further and further into the full mouth rehab. So you know, that's a great story because when I started, I started doing implants for free. Did you? Yeah, yeah you just- yeah, you I did for start. free. And I was like, you know what? Let's just charge for the crowns. Yeah. And uh, we got tons and tons, yeah. you know, with those four, we, we, I think we hit four digit implant numbers in like, you know, matter of a couple of years or something. Oh yeah, you're just pushing them out. If you, yeah. people flock to a lower cost implant and uh, you know, you, you do what you can for as long as you need it. And right. you've got the experience where you're doing the best work. No, absolutely, there. absolutely. Yeah. You know, for, for me, my mentor told me that if you're gonna place 500 implants, right? The next 500 would be the first 500. You'll fix it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was that the same scenario oh, for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, you make some mistakes, you learn yeah. and uh, you figure out what stuff works and what doesn't. And you take more CE and you start seeing what other guys are doing and, and incorporating that into your practice. And then you incorporate bone grafting and all this different stuff. And it just, you just add and add and add, nice, and add to nice. the point where you can you know, take on whatever you want. So when you got out of dental school, did you start implants right away or did you like yeah. go through the process of doing general dentistry? Yeah, so I started, so I went to Creighton and- uh, My school really good school and they had a really good program for implants. So okay. by the time I had left, I had placed or participated in placing like 30 implants. So in school, in school. Wow. Okay. I left, I had a really cool mentor um, from South Dakota, Dr. Lewison, and he let me do a ton. And I went up to his office frequently and we just kind of hung out with him. He just did a lot of implants in South Dakota. And, uh, so I got. So is that where you got the passion? Yeah, it was just nice. I loved it when I was in school, and so afterwards, when uh, I actually got into a residency program that kind of a okay. hundred implants or so in a year, which I thought was great. But then, uh, did you get a place on hundred? You know, I ended up kind of bailing on that when I met Dr. Roberts. Randy. Oh, okay. And so I bailed on my residency because they kind of had a more promising experience. I ended up probably doing triple that my first year. So your year. first year out of school, did you place any implants? Oh, my first year out of school, I probably placed 300. Wow. So it was, it was a good choice. Um, it was a hard choice to make in the moment to skip the residency program, but I, I got really good experience. Did you ever do any general dentistry? I do a lot, I still do, I enjoy it. Okay, I okay. enjoy molar root canals, I enjoy Oh, you it. still do those? Oh, I still do it all. Yeah, I, I enjoy veneers. Um, oh, nice. So I'll, I'll still do, I like, and I think the aesthetic side of dentistry, doing a set of veneers can contribute to success in, in, in the full in arches. Three and six full arches. Right, right, right. Doing right. The same thing, same thing with dentures. I tell everyone, if you can do a really solid wax rim, because mm -hmm. people don't do wax rims as much anymore, but learning how to do a wax rim, if you can get incisal positioning in your midline and, and lip posture, all that kind of stuff, that's what in the operating room. So it's kind of like, like, like learning how to do denture. If you can do a really good, se. if you can do a really good denture, you, you can, can do, do this, you three on six. This. You can do the prosthetic side of this. Now you've gotcha. got to, you've got to, that's the hard part with FP1 is you're incorporating the prosthetic side, the surgical side, the tissue you side. you them together. You've just got to merge it all. And perio. And yeah, yeah you, right? all, of it. all of it. Surgery. So no, that's great. So tell me something real quick here. When did you move to Utah? Uh, I grew up in Utah, so I've, I've been there. Oh, so you went to school? Okay, I understood. I, went to school. I actually did my first year dental school with uh, the students at the University of Utah, the med students. Oh, wow. So I was part wow. of a, a program that doesn't exist anymore. So we did one year at the University of Utah, then three in Omaha, Creighton. 
Oh, that's great. That's great. So today, what's going what's going on in your life? Like, what are yeah. you, what are, what are you what are you kind of tied in? So, Doctor Shore, um, he came to us for a training. And this was what six. last year or this some some earlier oh, this, this year? This was a few months ago. A few months ago. Yeah, okay, we weren't that that long ago. So, Doctor Shore, he's passionate about this far stuff, as you know. He loves it. Right, right. Um, he came to our training. We've been developing three on six for a long time. There's there's a couple things special I think about three on six. Uh, one. So what is, what is three on six? So three on six is a, a classification of FP1. Okay. Which is uh, a keeping your uh, similar tooth shape and size. Okay. When you're doing full mouth rehab. And uh, the way we do it, we, we break it into three bridges once the healing process is complete. Okay. Um, which is why the, the first number is three. Yeah, three. which is the okay. three on, okay. on six implants. Three bridges on six implants. Gotcha. And uh, so there's a couple things that have really helped with three on six. The patient side, you're getting a lot of people and a lot of patients with the way the internet is and, and right. the way people do research now, uh -huh. they're starting to realize that there's an option beyond FP3. Correct. Beyond all on X. Correct. And, and this is where I was kind of getting to at the beginning, our patient base mm -hmm. is getting younger and younger. Exactly. It's, I mean, you're seeing a lot of X addiction yep. um, that's just annihilated the teeth. Uh, Correct. Really broken down to dentition and I'd, I'd had to do a young lady from Atlanta, she was 26 years old. Oh, wow. And that was, you know, so if you think about doing an FP3, sometimes that's the only option, right? And we're not, we're not downplaying the, the use of FP3, but in a 26 year old that has good, relatively good tissue, relatively good health, sure. um, bone levels, they just got broken down dentition. So what They're are they moving that amount of bone? Yeah. So it's, what are they looking for typically, like when they want to, let's say, I want to extract? Otherwise, before FB one, what was the other option? Like a denture, maybe, right? De yeah, or, denture, or they're going FP three and they're and then just taking bone off, you know. And at a twenty six year old, yeah, that's tough because what if if the implants fail? And then where, now you got no bone, right? Where are you leaving them, even if they have to go to a denture? See, that was my whole issue with FB3 is because they're treating it like one size fits all. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and that's... And cleaning up the arch and just placing four implants, yeah. six implants. And, and you're seeing these bone trophies, you know, that was a right. big thing for a while. It's kind of slowed down a little bit, but we saw a lot of... And when I got out of school, we were seeing a lot of people posting bone trophies where they were just... Even with the implants, right? Well, yeah, and they were, what they were doing, you see the guys that would just saw off, they would leave the teeth in and they'd just take a 557 Ooh, and yeah, you know, yeah, flat yeah. plane it, break that all off and then pick the root tips out, which is a quick way to do it, obviously. But when you're removing that amount of bone on a healthy patient, it just doesn't make any sense. So the way I look at it, at, at it this way, it's the FP1, it's, it's more like an option, like you have a separate option for younger patients with good yeah. alveolar ridge, right, yeah. good height, and why take it out when, yeah, it, it, when the if, patient has good bone? If you think about, and we do this frequently, if you're an mm -hmm. implant dentist, you've probably done an implant bridge seven to 10. Right. Someone that's lost those front four teeth, we do it all the time. We do a bridge seven to 10 and right. you're not hacking off a lot of bone. Right. And when we're doing that, it's the same thing. Same, same concept, concept, yeah. We're just extending that to the posterior as well. So any listeners like listening out there, right? They're not they kind of need to understand it's like doing immediate implants. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then doing immediates with like a bridge. And immediate, and it, we're immediately loading the majority of the time. Right. Um, reason being, we're trying to develop pontic sites. We're trying to create tissue. You can mm -hmm. do that without immediately loading. It's just a lot harder. Uh, once the implants have integrated, tissues kind of healed into a flap, it becomes a lot more difficult. So gotcha. if you can immediately load it and you have a good prosthetic design, takes a good lab that knows how to do FP1, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and then it takes a good amount of training in order to figure out where you're positioning everything in order to create the tissue and- No, absolutely. I was here this morning and this patient, you guys did a, did a case last night, yesterday, yeah. finished it up last night. Patient was walking out, looked amazing. Yeah. He was happy. I mean- Yeah, he was, that, he was that's, excited. It turned yeah, out- Yeah, he's excited. I mean, he wasn't great. even that, that older kind of a gentleman. And, yeah. and you yeah. guys really rocked it out. Yeah. Alex did a, Dr. Shore did a great job. Yeah. Uh, he crushed it yesterday. Timing went really well. Patient woke up super smooth. And today he was ecstatic. Was so awesome. today you are, we are here in, in his office yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. You guys flew out of Utah, right? Yeah. So when we, after we do our training, uh -huh. this isn't, 
hard thing to do. Yeah. And we, we don't ever downplay that. We actually, when we bring people into our training, we kind of make sure they're qualified for it at this point. We used to take anyone on. So based on that statement, who is it for? This is for... Who would be like an ideal student coming in into the course? Someone like Dr. Shore that's done FP3. Okay. That has a, an extended amount of implant experience. Sure. Knows how to bone graft that uh, just needs a little bit more training and skill in order to, to do the, FP1. the arena of FP1. And so if you haven't done a lot of implants, we need that experience beforehand. Got it. You're going to experience failures. Anyone that places implants is going to experience failures. And you have to know how you're going to deal with those. So, so in your definition of experience, what would it be? Like for someone who has placed, let's say, you know, 50, 100 implants and yeah. if, is, is that, are they a Yeah, if you've placed, you know, five, 600 implants over okay. the course of a career, if you've, you know, you know how to soccer pres do soccer preservation. Sure. I think ridge augmenting is a really good um, okay. thing to know about. Uh, we try and avoid sinus work if sure, we can. Sure. So, but, you know, occasionally we've got to do some sinus lifting, that kind of thing. Okay. So if you have that good surgical background and if you've done FP3 and you've dealt with the complications right. of FP3, it's not much different going into FP1. Just tweaking it a little bit yeah, here and there, right? And we're figuring out how to be a little more conservative and the tissue management, that's where... Tissue management. Tissue management becomes more complex. I'm really intrigued with FP1 and three on six is because there's not a lot of bone reduction. Yeah. And I think that's huge. Yeah. You know, people need to understand that as providers, we need to give our patients options. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that's what it's about. It's about being able to, I think ethically, we have to present those options and say, Absolutely. even if you can't do FP1, the patient should know that that is an option out there. Correct. Correct. And that they have good enough bone that they can keep it. It just needs to be done properly. So with that being said, do you still do FP3s? Yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes that's the only thing you can do. Correct. Like correct. If they're in a denture, and they come in, they've lost a lot of alveolar ridge, sure, they've sure. lost height, you've got to build back up, then FP3 is the option. FP2, you know, you can do some longer, longer teeth. You, so it's good to have all the, all the options all on the a options. table, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. So um, three on six. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Who, who are the founders? What's going on? And what's the projection? And what's the future for a three on six? Yeah, so Smile Systems is the parent company. Smile um, Systems. That was um, started by my partner, Dr. Randy Roberts. Okay. I partnered in with him at our clinic in, uh, in Taylorsville, Utah. And then in, in me and him, I was kind of at the beginning process when he started doing that. Oh, wow. And we, we were doing them with Sarek. We were doing them for 10,000 an arch. And so you guys just kind of like what were the warriors, right? Yeah, the trailblazers, just, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Figuring out how to do it because uh, we just, we weren't keen on the idea of just chopping off a lot exactly. of these people. So we started off really humbly and designing things ourselves and it took forever and it was hard. And we did start off with dentures and then we would, just, we would load afterward. Wow. And then we slowly, we, we started building our own lab that was able to handle these cases and we brought on more experienced people and, and eventually we got to the point where, well, and then we were doing it cement retained, which was okay. some difficulties. Okay. But it worked. It worked and it worked right. well. But the yeah. complications were harder to manage. Correct. Correct. And uh, then we, we, uh, we had a really good partner in, uh, that helped us kind of move on to more screw retained. And that's kind of where we are right now is a screw retained, fixed prosthetic. Uh -huh immediately loaded. Uh, what did the whole process look like? Like how many years? Uh, let's see, I think I did my first three on six that was di designed by Sarek probably five or six years ago. Oh, so wow, it's been okay. five or six years of development. Um, and just perfecting the system. Perfecting the system. Right. And, and you know, Randy, he started off doing maybe one to two a year and then it worked into, it started to get a little more popular. And then the name became well known. We created the content and we're starting to help patients be aware that there's another option. Another option, absolutely. And so, you know, they don't understand FP1, FP2, FP3. No, no. You know, they're not going to research FP1. So, so how did you guys come up with three on six, the name? Uh, you know, I think it was probably a play on all on. Four, right, right, right. All on X. Uh -huh. And so it was, well, let's, how many implants do we need to, to, you know, we look at the a bridge seven to ten. Sure, we sure. do that all the time, or we do a bridge in the posterior if they've got bone, and we say, okay, well, how many do we need to get that in? And so we do three on six. We also um, hold the that's a, that's a great name by the way. Four on eight, 
So yeah. some people, if they have a little bit more bone in the posterior and they want to split at the midline, which is a little more aesthetic, right? We can because uh, right now our implant positioning basically goes um, three, six, seven, ten, eleven. Fort. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of the, uh, what we're training is a, a standard implant positioning. If correct, possible. correct. And then we deviate from that if we need to. So um, you could have eight implants. You could have six implants. We, yeah. Right? So four on eight, we'll do four bridges over eight implants. Sure. That creates a split right at the midline, which is awesome. an aesthetic option for some patients. Um, gets them a little bit more teeth in the posterior. So that's an option too. So what's the future? Future is... Patient awareness, uh -huh. you know, we're, we're growing. We've got YouTube channels. People are watching our videos. They're starting to learn. We've got a lot more out there on social media. That nice. Just once you get this just awareness. awareness yeah, right, once right. The patients understand that you're getting these, these younger people and they're going in and they, you don't, I don't know if you've had a consult for an all on four, you generally don't tell them, well, I'm going to shave off 10 millimeters. And that does not go very well with somebody. Yeah, it's not going to go super well. Right. Um, so a lot of times they don't know. We had a video of a young lady that had it done on, uh, it was a TikTok video and she right. had it done. And she opened up her mouth and she was showing the camera the, the picture of the full FP3 on her lower. And it was a good looking FP3. I think it was done really well. Um, but it was, it just you know, aesthetics. it's yeah. thick. It's thick. And so she wasn't aware that that's what it was going to be. And right. so we had one of our uh, three on six coordinators made a video kind of explaining the difference with three on six, the size of the bridges being a lot more natural feeling. And uh, I think within two days that had 90,000 views or something like that. Wow. So you're starting to get patients aware of this being out there. But the other so trial is getting the providers that are able to do it. FP1's hard. It is, it is. Very, very technique sensitive, right? Yeah. You guys are making the patients aware, the community aware of it. What about the education portion? Like, are you guys like actually taking time to explain to patients and yeah. on your YouTube channel? Yeah, so on the channels, we're explaining what it is, why it's important to know about it, the, how you can preserve bone. Very um, nice. And, and then, like I said, then it's, okay, we need a provider. And Dr. Shore, he's done. And Smile Systems is kind of designed to not only provide the training for it. Sure. Um, we also help with the marketing. Um, we're creating the content. Exactly. And Dr. Shore being here in Chicago, he's just... Is he like a one-off for you guys? Uh, we, have, we have a lot of providers that are doing really well. This is probably, start. This is probably the first big market we've entered into. And we've got a few more got coming it. from bigger markets, San Diego, Austin, I think. Um, so these bigger markets are starting to come. So the plan is to spread nationwide. Yeah, we've got, right? once we can start doing, once we have the providers available, then we'll okay. nationwide marketing. Um, in Utah at our office, we're getting, that's basically Dr. Roberts, myself, and then we have Dr. Weisenberg. That's, this is all we're doing now. Um, besides, I like to throw in some general general dentistry uh, here and there. You know, it just keeps me focused. No, that's that's I love it. Keeps I love the skills it. up. But um, you know, we're we're doing you know over thirty arches a month of just wow three on six. Wow, and we have patients flying in from all over the country. Well, we ideally we want those patients to be able to get this procedure done close to them because right, it's hard right. to do this out of state. Um, and so, so that's that's incredible. Yeah. So we want. And, and, you know, a testament to our marketing, Dr. Shore has been just getting consult after consult. I think this is already, so we did three arches this weekend. I think he's already done four. Correct. Beyond this. Uh-huh. So in the first three months, and I think he's, he's, killing it. he's got another four arches planned. Yeah. And so he's, uh, he's doing really well. He's ramping it up. And he's ramping up good. No, that's great. So for a provider, like who's looking into this course, how do they get a hold of? the course coordinator or whoever is putting yeah, this so, together. What, uh, what, what is the info? On 3on6.com, there's information on 3on6.com? Yeah, okay. they, can, uh, they can also contact us My uh, on through Instagram. Uh, we have 3on6 What's on Instagram. Oh, okay, 3on6. Uh-huh, and we've got- So it's number three. Number three. On, on and number, number six. six. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, any last words? No, no, we're excited to be here. Uh, Dr. Shores, I know. It. He's, uh, we love coming. It's been fun to come out here and see his progression already since his training. You know, I was, uh, I mean, he called me up last night. He's like, hey, you know what? Locke's coming in and, you know, he's going to have a team, uh, you know, yeah. come out here and help him out. I was like, all right, cool. Count me in. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's like, yeah, you should come over. And I'm I like, all right, cool, here. man. It's been fun. To and uh, yeah, it's, it's been so exciting, like speaking with you and knowing like the kind of a little background yeah. about Three on Six and how you guys started. Yeah. So that was awesome. Yeah, I appreciate you coming. Well, great. Hey, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is Dr. Noah Liu checking out. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and we will be in touch. Checking out with Dr. Locke, and we're going to finish up the surgery with Dr. Alex Shore. Back in.